What's up everyone, it is Sploosh here, and I'm bringing you some Dota 2 with Venomancer, or Vino. I'm just gonna go ahead and call him, uh, Vino. This is a video, as you probably can already tell by the title. It's based on the concept of Roaming Ganker. I play two heroes with, as a Roaming Ganker, that would be Sand King and, uh, Vino. With these heroes, I can do some big things, and I want to show you guys... This isn't going to be, you know, the be-all, end-all video because it's just going to be one game. I am honestly just too lazy to edit and find, you know, four or five games and try to put pieces together. So uh, here we go. What I'm doing is harassing middle. Now, I'm spitting and being super aggressive because obviously there's a regen, which I saw when I ran up. At this point, there's no ward here, so they didn't. he didn't really know I was there. And normally I would have just chilled out and waited. One thing to, to note is if you are going to play middle with a roaming ganker like this, you really want to uh, you know walk in front of the creeps up here and delay them as much as possible. If you're forcing the enemy to stand like in the pool here, and uh, that is pretty much a guaranteed first blood. I do have other games, as you probably noticed in the intro, where it got kind of like that immediate first blood, and this isn't going to be one of those games. But, you know, um, there's still a lot of good things, and the style still works. At this point, I'm still kind of getting experience. I actually am level 2 now, where middle is only level 1. And as you can see here, our middle is top farm in the game. And their middle is pretty much at the bottom of the barrel. So I'm not feeling too bad right now. There, When you're playing the roaming ganker role, it can be a little taxing on... Whoever is playing up here, that would be Smas here playing the Razor. Uh, I'm not really sure because I didn't really watch his perspective on how he's handling this, but you will see later that he does a good job of things and I do help him out. Normally, and, and if there is demand for more of these kind of videos, definitely uh, make yourself heard. I do check all the comments. But normally in this situation, you'll get a quick first blood by hanging out here and coming down or by then beelining over this way and helping because this is a long lane. I know though that Darkseer is there and it's super hard to gank a Darkseer. And this lane is, or at least was, generally pushed down. So I'm feeling pretty confident about coming and helping up here. I don't know there's three here and I didn't know that they would see me in the ward but I probably should have thought of that a little bit. But I feel like this is winnable. And we'll see here how this goes. Uh, Smas did a great job of hitting the Lich right there. And he's going to... I probably didn't need to turn around there. And I would have lived for sure. But, you know what? A double kill works for me. And... I got two assists out of it. So, that's double assist gold. And I'll spawn... I'm back already. Real quick, too, I wanted to mention this in the beginning of the game, but my ring of protection obviously was for the Basilisk ring, and I'll get into items later in the game when things slow down a little bit. But I do regret the ring of protection build, uh, only because you got Tempest, so you know he's going to be jungle. From personal experience, if you ward this camp right here, and you ward uh, this camp, no, not this camp, this camp right here, they can, yes, counter ward it, but most people don't, and this is public setting. And that will dramatically destroy this guy's farm. And it'll probably force him... He'll probably end up doing kind of this back and forth here. And then maybe get the money to counter ward. But the damage is already done usually within the first few minutes. Um, so that's sort of regret. And now, at this point, one thing to note is during the daylight, and he knows I'm here. I'm just chilling right now. Just kind of making my presence known. The ward can see right to this point here, and he's standing over here, the Beastmaster. Oh, here we go. I'm going to get a kill. For what I, I think I waited him out. Oops, auto-attacked the wrong thing there. Normally, you don't want to take the kill from the mid guy, but he was getting away. And I you know, saw the regen, so I'm like, hey, let me have that. So yeah, basically, I, hood, I hid here, and he couldn't see from here. And if he's standing here... 
he can see just about like this. So he can't see this and he shouldn't be able to see in the trees there. So what happened is he probably figured I went up and he didn't feel like waiting any longer and he risked it and stood here. And then Night Stalker did a great job of snaring so I could get into position and kill. That's a 50% snare on my little spit. And then you got the 11% on here. And so the build I went is uh, the spit and then the sting and then you go for wards. I jack wards from here up to four because it gives them a substantial amount of health. It's like 620. See, I could look here. Oh, uh, that's uh, 450. So 450 early game is really amazing and considering you got auto attack damage around 60 to 70 at this point in the game. And it's good damage. It's like 40 damage. At this point, this thing's only 10, but it eventually will go up to 40. So rushing that last ward's really effective. You can see the damage just goes up a lot. You know, 10 damage on a ward when you can have about six of them out. You know, it's adding up to like 60 damage when they're getting pounded. I feel confident about messing with these guys, and I called Smouse in to help me out. And here he goes. He's gonna clean up on these guys. And they're wasting all their nuke on me. So even if I did die here, again, the carry here, I mean, look at these level seven at six minutes this is not bad at all. And uh, yeah, he decides smartly to just back off there. Even though with all the health regen he has, he could have potentially dived that a little bit, but nah, no problem. He's just doing everything right. So, and I had a bottle, so I just quickly regen. And we got here Level 4 mid Beastmaster, and I'm level 5, dude. Check that out. Without laning at all, um, I'm a higher level than the mid. And I realize that I can't. I'm not afraid. What's he gonna do? He can't stun me. Whoopie doo, he throws his axes. And here we see Axe is gonna try to. I could see him. This is, this is vision I could see, so I knew he was coming. And I backed out. And then Furion came to help. I'm just popping my mana pots so I can spit more wards. And it's actually interesting if you watch what I do here. I throw a ward up. So there you go. I already got cyst damage on that. Like 80 gold I think just popped up. Then you watch over here. Mid's doing big things at level 7. I pop a ward. Get another assist gold. Oh, actually. It didn't say I got the assist gold there. But you can see now I'm almost level 6. And we killed, what, 4 people? Yeah. We killed everybody except for their Darkseer in a very short period of time. Uh, so I've got two kills, five assists. That represents every kill on my team, basically. And, uh, you know, as far as levels, we got now level 8, level 8, level 8. And I'm still holding at level 6. And you look at their team, you get 5, 7. Uh, and you know, the 7s, you know, their solo who hasn't been bothered and 4-5-4. Four, four. So they're doing terrible. And I think I can safely say I can take a little credit for that. Um, On to the Basilisk Ring. Uh, basically the Basilisk Ring gives you almost infinite mana for the Plague Ward. And you'll see here too I didn't get my ult. I think with 200 mana cost that's just not going to happen right away for uh, Vino. So you're going to want to get another point in Poison Sting. And keep going on the plague wards because you can't go plague ward at level six and by level seven i'll finish up my plague wards and you know eventually i'll get the ult don't get me wrong i believe i'll do that i don't know roughly 10 or something like that but see you're going to see an interesting dynamic and by the way let me just say about this hero vino he was and i just saw the stats yesterday he is the most picked hero in uh, all of the Dota, Dota tournaments, uh, or at least in the recent Dota tournaments, it was something like 66 picks. And obviously that's sort of biased because of bans. So he's not banned. But let me go ahead and say why I think he is uh, the most picked hero. These wards make it hard to gank him, give him crazy vision. Uh, they allow him to do what I'm doing here, which is jungle with just a Basilisk Ring. And, I mean, look at this. These things aren't even maxed yet. And I already can spam this much. I have, like, control of their forest. I'm off the radar. So, you think about... One thing that's underrated in these kind of games is how often you just cannot see somebody. 
it creates sort of an, a feeling of paranoia. It's something that forces somebody not to cross a river when they want to. For example, Beastie here. I'm not sure. Maybe he's going to help this tower. Yeah, I guess he is. But see, he may have wanted to hit this tower, but just the idea that I'm not visible can make people tentative and make decisions they wouldn't normally want to or, or wouldn't make. And this is great. This guy's running in. Smos getting crazy farm. He took top farm. And you can see mid is still second top farm. And then you got their mid, the bottom of the ladder. And I, I think that is sort of a momentum thing. I gotta love how that ult is just kicking his ass. Good job there. And so he gets a kill and he's gonna go in. Get some more kills. He's doing the drain. His, his build is great. I think he's doing it perfectly. And uh, there you go, more kills. And I'm going to help, but it's like, <laughs> no one to help, they're all dead. And then I decide too, I saw he wounded these, so I figure I'll get some free creep kills. Um, but, it's great, and and I think I'm going to try to help mid here. Oh, but then, this is interesting, I think he this guy could actually have killed me because I missed my spit, which sucks. Not much of a skill shot on the spit, it just, I failed. Uh, and it can, you know, it can be missed. I'm pretty sure, for the most part, if you just click on a hero, you can't miss, but I'm not sure. So he bought the, I bought a health pot here and upgraded my boots. Um, basically because with the Basilisk Ring and the lack of concern for my ultimate, I can remain a presence and get experience. To, you know, and of course, a little more gold. It's all good. Um... What am I doing here? I think I just wanted to check runes since we don't have wards. But so far the momentum is greatly in our favor. And um, yeah, oh yeah, by the way, so I was talking about what this hero can do. So you've got that ability to sort of farm with your wards. So that gives you kind of a natural gold. M most support type heroes cannot farm like a uh, Vino can. You have um, something like Keeper of the Light who can probably bomb neutrals or... Um, that's nice, I got that courier. You can bomb the neutrals. Uh, but the vision and safe feeling of doing neutral creeping also and doing it at such a low level with basically no farm at all and just the effectiveness of Vino in throughout the game so you can play him like a support hero and go for the ultimate staff which is just absolutely devastating or he can play sort of a semi carry role with some un unique picks I've seen the orchid work uh, with Vino especially on like a lot of blink heroes with low hit points you just kinda of poison spit and orchid and that's like crazy damage um, I've seen like What's it called? Let me check the items real quick here. We got... Um, I'll use Shadow Blade sometimes if I feel like I can get away with it and there's not too much invisibility going on. But... Darn it. Where is the item? Oh, there it is. Yeah, Manta. I thought it was Manta. Yeah, the Manta style is a pretty decent pick because the Illusions will get the uh, Poison Sting effect. It's pretty cool. Um... I personally am a Treads fan. I think that Vino's pretty much only hope is to not... Like, a lot of times teams will try to, like, stun him and kill him in a stun so he can't get his ult off. But once Vino's hit points get to a certain point... This is going to be a death by me, but it works out. Getting the kill. It's amazing he gets away. But... Uh, what was I saying here? So... Once you get to a certain point of hit points, people just start to start to expect you to just run in and ult. And really, in a team fight, if you can get your ult off on three to four people, maybe five, you've pretty much done your job and then hopefully you'll get the spit off and maybe a couple wards. But if you die just getting those two spells off you on enough people, you pretty much did your job. And so if you're squishy, it gives that opportunity to kill you before you ult. And uh, if you're not squishy and they obsess over you, even 
even after you do get your abilities off, you're pro you're giving your carry more time to carry in a team fight. Um, so I would normally recommend just kind of focusing on the support build, and then after you get the ultimate staff, anything else is just gravy. I've done various things after that point. Just pick what you want to do. And right here, let's get rid of this screen. Right here, I all missed the Beastmaster, but I was hoping I'd get him. I'm going to see here. Smas, because of all the kills we had earlier, is just going to absolutely destroy these guys. Shoot. You know what? Shh, darn it. You know what? I'm not sure if maybe my spit did manage to catch up in there. Because did you notice the health of those two dudes? Being so low as it was. Ah, uh, regardless. Um, at this point, it's just a matter of uh, time before we destroy this game. Mm, let's see if I'm missing anything on items here. So, oh, another a few gimmicks I've seen people try is they will go for the um, Orb of Venom on Vino. It's kind of intriguing. It's cheap, and it. From what I understand, it does stack, and it is a 4% slow with a, another dot on it. But you know, it adds up. What we got going on here? Team just going crazy. You can see the farm at this point in the game. It's not good. Um. Oh yeah, okay, so how to um, creep? My favorite is to creep this group right here. Actually, speaking of that, my goofball teammate's trying to get this pull. If you uh, creep right here, you put like kind of a line of wards, like right here, and then uh, you just constantly keep pulling. And even even if you leave like seven wards here and just leave, a lot of times you'll kill the whole group. And even best is since you're killing them up here they will keep respawning. It's almost an infinite source of gold. I believe you can get roughly 300 gold per minute if you consistently kill this group on every respawn. So it's pretty amazing. And you're not really taking away from your team. you still got three lanes you know, that your carries could choose from and then you've got the normal jungle farm. On this side of the map it's nice to put a group of wards sort of in a ball here and then Hopefully cut a tree or get vision to this camp and then, you know, attack this camp and attack this camp and then just sort of run around. And again, you got the three camps usually respawning during this process. Um, and that's pretty... Oh, and over here you just give vision. It's pretty much the same thing, but this is not as fun or ideal, but harder for you to die doing it here. So that's pretty much farming with him. I almost never recommend with him even laning to get farm because you can always give it up to other people maybe a, even a support that has that struggles with farm and uh, you'll see my next item I like to get the point booster is if I can you know break out that extra 200 gold because and I'm going towards the ultimate staff in this game the reason is because that gives me the extra mana I need for the ultimate without hindering you know my other spells. I mean, you see, even here, I, it's sort of a tricky game because you want to uh, ward sp spam as much as you can. So you create kind of a kiting chain. So I want I want these creeps to want to keep coming around, and this should cause that effect, even though I can't see them. And uh, look at those amount of trees. At this point, the other team has given up, They're hanging out in the woods. They realize it's over. Got 22 kills, and uh, so it's just a matter of time. But that about covers it. I I think that the items are, you know, pretty obvious. You want to decide if you can if your team can allow for you to turn sort of yourself into a semi-carry and there's just not enough carry on your team, go for it. 
But otherwise, you know, sacrifice and buy wards if, if your team needs some wards. And uh, maybe some dust to see if, if you want to try to gank an invisible hero. As I, you will see in the beginning of the video, you saw me, uh, I, I ganked the spider as early as I could to give that early advantage. Uh, this game really is a game of momentum, and if you can be off the map ca causing fear and giving your laners that momentum, the game is uh, pretty much an easy. You're getting called tryhard in the chat here. I really feel like my pick and play of Vino probably caused that. A lot of people in pubs are just not experienced in handling a roaming ganker, and, you know... Uh, I've I've experienced it, you know, where a Saiyan King is roaming and kicking some ass and you're just constantly getting jumped and you don't have a hero that can get away. Invoker's fun to feed on. Because, yeah, they can go in the invisible build, but some of them, they'll go that fire, ice build, and they uh, will easy easy target, slow movement speed early in the game. So that pretty much covers it. Um, I hope you guys learned something from this. I'll try, if, if interested, to post more videos. I'll probably have Sand King on the table at some point to show a similar playstyle but with a different hero. Sand King doesn't quite have um, the jungle presence, but at the same time he can push a lane twice as fast as uh, Vino. So it's sort of, you know, back and forth. Also, Vino is kind of one of those things where you go in, you alt, and then you may just die because he has no real escape, and it's not really worth going for the push stick. While uh, Sand King is almost unkillable, uh, you know, there are some characters that counter him, but for the most part he's a real a nuisance and can force a team to obsess over a hero that really doesn't matter if he dies in the long run. You know, a carry will always be kind of a higher priority. So it's an interesting dynamic and makes for keeping the game fresh. Appreciate all of you watching these videos. Uh, hope you can share it with people uh, so the channel will continue to grow. If you have any questions, concerns, post and I'll try to reply in a timely manner. And uh, that's pretty much it.